Hey YouTube, it's Matt with Olympus Reptiles. And this is going to be the opening video on what we hope to be kind of a series, although with my ADHD riddled brain, let's be honest, me staying on topic is pretty much next to impossible. But what this series is going to kind of entail uh, is in our normal style, a little bit of <laughs> it's kind of all over the map, but it's going to be a series outlining kind of the business aspect of creating a ball python business from scratch our journey in that, what we've learned that we've done really, really, really well, what we've learned that we've done really, really, really bad, uh, what we've learned from other people, and hopefully for those of you who think that maybe you want one day your hobby to be your business, and whether you're at just a level of wanting to produce and sell a few clutches, or you're wanting to retire one day and just have this be your sole job, we hope that you may find this helpful along the way because it's going to kind of cover aspects all through there because we've really been at every level of that uh, or we're trying to achieve every level of that. Some of them we haven't quite reached yet. And let's be honest, when you first get into this, you know, it, it doesn't start off as a business. It never does. Uh, well, I guess I shouldn't say it never does. Some people I know, I, I, they, they do. They get into it with the mind of, this is going to be my business. I didn't. I got into it in the mind of, I'm going to have a pet snake. Uh, and as a matter of fact, let me show you that snake. It all started with this guy here. It never meant to be a business. I was post-divorce uh, and was in a pet shop with a friend and saw this snake. And my friend was like, no, you got nothing else. I mean, she didn't say you got nothing else. That sounds terrible. She goes, you got nobody else to answer to. If you want it, just get it. It was kind of a freeing moment that, hey, I could spend my money on what I wanted, not have to worry about anybody else. And so I did. And I just got a pet snake. And he was just a little bitty baby. It was the first carpet python I'd ever heard of. I'd never done any research. I literally did that impulse buy. You know that thing everybody talks about you shouldn't do? I was that guy. I went into a pet shop, bought whatever crap they told me, and impulse bought this great, beautiful jungle jag carpet python, knowing nothing other than he was beautiful and I wanted him. But that led to something else. So let's go talk about, I don't know, let's see what that led to. And that led to this, which is an SK Exanthic ball python. It really led to two snakes, and what that was was an SK Exanthic ball python and a bumblebee ball python. The bumblebee was my first animal I ever tried to flip. You guys know I hate reptile flipping. I didn't even know that was a thing yet. Uh, that's a whole story for another day. But I started doing research on the carpet python I just bought, belated. <laughs> and started running across all these morphs of ball python. And previous to having that carpet, that was my first ever python. I'd had boas before. Uh, so I ran across this exanthic gene, and I just fell in love. I thought it was the greatest thing I'd ever seen. And I just realized right then that I just, in fact, had to have him. Didn't I have to have you? Yes, I did. Yes, I did have to have you. And so I got him. Now, uh, at this point in time, I was just a guy with three snakes. All three of them were males. I had no one plans on breeding, but the addiction had started, right? So as I had this guy, I start looking into more and more and more and more things. Uh, I was not able to flip the ball python, the, oh, the uh, bumblebee like I thought I was. I had a deal all made for it, but I thought he was too cool. I ended up just keeping him anyway. Uh, when I went to go take him where I was supposed to take him to, which was actually the same reptile shop I bought my carpet python from, they were closed that day to go to a show, so I ended up just having to buy a cage at Petco. Again, glass cage, so I've got glass cage everywhere, and kept that animal as well. So now I've got three snakes. So then I start looking and seeing more and more things. I ran across, for me, snakes that were really, really expensive. At the time, that was a zebra bee and a killer zebra bee, and the killer zebras were going for about 10,000. You gotta remember, guys, this is years ago. It's a different time. And that was when my business started, right there. Because I said, mm, I'm not paying that. I can make it. And so what I ended up doing was going and trying to buy some parts for it. But that was really the beginning of Olympus Reptiles. Because then it turned into if you're going to be here and you're going to live here as a snake, you know, you're going to have to help pay for food, pay, pay your own rent more or less. Um, so the whole mindset from that point on changed. And that's, I think, a pretty common story for most people. I would say the vast majority of people, of people who start a ball python business start it that very same way. You get a snake, you get a couple snakes, maybe three or four, and pretty soon it turns into a, well, 
why not? I want to do this experience. I want to, to get this. I'm going to have to sell the babies off. You may not think of that as a business. I know a lot of people who are breeding ball pythons. You know, they only want to produce one or two clutches a year, maybe three clutches. They don't care about the money aspect. They're more wanting to get to a certain goal they have. But guess what that is? That's still a ball python business because you are selling those babies. And if you're not selling them, you're having to find a way to move them, whether that's through wholesale or whatever. You're running a small business. Uh, it may not be a profitable one, okay? But in essence, that's what you're doing. So that's... I guess how my business was born the next big thing and what this video is going to kind of be about and our next series will kind of follow on how we do it and how we get into marketing how we get into sales how we get into those things and how we how we do some of this but the next thing I'm going to say is from that point on your focus has to change and you have to plan and if you decide I never want to have more than a couple clutches then okay you can run that in a small room in your house, your living room, wherever you want to run it at. You can probably run it in glass cages if you want, uh, or maybe just one rack. You know, you're not going to have to go kind of crazy. Um, and that's okay. If that's what you want to be, that's okay. And don't let anybody push you and tell you you got to turn into this, or you need to be the next Brian Barcheck, or there's millions and millions of dollars in this, because, guys, there's, there's really not, Okay. For the vast majority of people involved in ball pythons, uh, you're going to be very, 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 very lucky to make a living, okay, doing this. Uh, you're certainly most likely not going to get rich doing this. It is what it is. And I know somebody's going to say, oh, that's bullshit, blah, blah, blah. But then I want you to start counting and telling me how many people you know that, that you know are making a ton of money breeding ball pythons. I'm talking a ton of money. We're talking, you know, lots of money, getting rich breeding ball pythons. Uh, and what you're going to find is you don't know that many. And most of the ones you think of have separate sources of income as well, or their money that they started with came from a different source, right? It's just a fact of it. Um, so with that, knowing there's not going to be just ass loads of money flowing in because you produced a few clutches, you truly have to plan. You have to plan, how many clutches am I going to have? How am I going to incubate them? How am I going to sell them? How am I going to improve my genetics? And how am I going to get my name out there to put myself different than the other 300 people on my block who decided to start breeding ball pythons this year? Because that really is uh, a big part of the issue in this business. Now, you're probably thinking this sounds doom and gloom. And I don't know, maybe it does. You know, because it is a market that I think it's it's hard to be very, very successful in. I think it's a market that's fairly simple to be somewhat successful in. I think it's fairly simple to get to a point, you know, that your snakes pay for themselves. I think it's fairly simple to get to a point where you can get to the projects you want long term and they can provide assistance in buying the new animals and paying for their own food and whatnot. Um, but I think it's very difficult to get to a point where this is all you do by yourself or with a couple people it's just that's a really big leap we're not there yet okay i'll be honest we're not if you think i am trust me i'm not i have another job so does camera guy kurt this is not how we eat uh, but that's not meant to discourage you because you know people say oh <laughs> you know i'm not about the money and that guy over there is about the money let me tell you what that really means. Whenever somebody says that guy over there is about the money, I'm not about the money at all. No, I don't care about the money. That guy over there, he's just about the money. What that really translates to is I haven't been able to think about how to run my business and how to make this work. And I didn't plan shit and I'm just running around helter skelter because I don't care about the money, although I wish I had it. And that guy over there, I'm really pissed off because he's doing well and he's about the money. So I'm going to call him a bunch of negative things like he's about the money even though the fact of the matter is he just planned better. Um, I'm telling you, plan. Plan. I can't stress it enough. Plan how you're going to market. Plan how you're going to move babies. Plan how you're going to keep babies. Make sure you're keeping them in a place you can keep them. If you're wanting to grow a collection of, of 50 snakes and 50 ball pythons to make a nice supplemental income, which you can do with 50 really good ball pythons, 50 good breeders, if you're producing 30 clutches a year, uh, you know, there's good money there. I mean, you can make a nice extra income. 
You probably shouldn't do that in your fucking apartment that's got a no pet policy, right? I mean, let's be honest. There is some planning that goes into this. Because when you do that crap, then you're on the news. Then you get kicked out of your apartment. Then you lose all your animals. You make all of us look like assholes. So don't do that. Uh, plan. Make sure you have that space or have that partnership or a place to do it. And then know before you start breeding how you're going to get rid of your babies. For me, it was how am I going to do this? Well, on the first level, where I'm only producing very few, I knew I could probably do it through Craigslist and Facebook which back in the day was a viable way of doing it. I knew when I was producing a little more that I could go to Kansas City, which for me is about a two-hour drive, and every other month Kansas City had a reptile show. I also knew Wichita, Kansas had, I think, two reptile shows a year. So I knew within three hours of me, I could get to eight reptile shows where I could buy a table if I needed an event and, and get rid of my babies that I didn't have room for. I knew I had an outlet to sell them. Plan that. If you don't know how you're going to do it, guess what's going to happen? You're going to be that guy who's having to just give crap away, which then doesn't help fund your business. And then you're going to be like, well, I'm not about the money. That guy over there is about the money. Yeah, because that guy planned and did it right. It's a fact. Uh, it's this negative connotation to talk about money in ball pythons. But this series, we're going to talk a lot about money. And I don't think that anybody in this industry should be ashamed about that. I don't think you should feel bad if you sell an animal. I don't think you should feel bad if you make a profit. I don't think you should feel bad as long as you're trying to do the best that you can. You're going to fuck up. You are. So am I. I have a lot. Uh, I will some more. You're going to make people really like you sometimes. You're going to make other people hate you. There is a list of people that hate me longer than I know. The fact of the matter is I don't know any of their names because none of them are important. There's not a single person that hates me in this industry or world that's important because they just don't matter to me. I mean, they're like, you know, they're less important than a flea on a dog's ass, if you want to get real technical. Well, especially when it ain't my dog. Uh, I'm going to concentrate on the people that I know I can help. I'm not going to worry about those that, that dislike me. I figure if nobody dislikes me, I'm probably not doing this right. So, that's kind of the introduction to the series. What I want you to stay tuned for, and yes, we're going to work in showing animals, just like we did Erebus and Kronos in this series. It's not going to be just me rambling. But expect to see a video on marketing, how to market yourself. A video on, on how to grow your finances in the ball python world. You know, how to work your money, how to manage your money uh, in aspects of this business. You're going to see that. We're going to probably cover taxation and LLC. I think it's important. And when you get to a certain point, you need to go legit, okay? <laughs> you can't just be cash under the table because one day it's going to come back to bite you. And if it doesn't come back to bite you, well, I guess lucky you. But let's, let's try to be a above ground market, shall we? Let's all go legit if we can. So we're going to talk about LLCs, going legit, how to set your business up the right way on that. We're going to talk about social media and ways to market yourself on social media to set yourself apart. Some were very, very okay at. Others, I'm very, very shitty at. I'm no Brian Barczyk, and I don't pretend to be. Hell, uh, you know, there's avenues that we haven't taken yet that we probably should have. Looking back, I go, damn, if I'd have done this from step one, where would I be now? So I'm going to tell you what those are so you can do it from step one. So those are the videos I expect to show, then also videos on growing your collection, and then planning long term. Uh, I can tell you our plan stretches out currently about five years, but it's fluid. It changes all the time. But there is about a five-year plan at all times of where I want to go, where I want Olympus to be, where I want Olympus to be financially, and where I want camera guy Kurt and I to be financially with Olympus. So that's what this whole series is going to be on. So welcome to the introduction. Let's talk some business. Kurt, you want to add anything? No. Nope. What do you think, Kurt? It's going to be fun? Yeah. You know what you should do? You know what you should do to get a lot of views? No. We need to do a video where we talk about the money aspect and just have it rain in money and like stripper poles everywhere. A lot of views. Make it rain. We're going to make it rain. Although we make so much money at this, we can barely afford to make it hail pennies. I'm just going to throw that out there. <laughs> you know what they call that when you do that? When you make it hail? No, when you show a bunch of money and like all these cars and everything. No. They call it flexing. They call it flexing? Should we flex? I'm going to flex. All right, guys. Thanks to Ball Pythons. 
I was able to afford this Pepsi Cola. Pepsi Cola, we're always looking for a cola sponsor. RC tastes better, but you were what was in the store. Uh, <laughs> I, I've never heard it called flexing, but I don't follow the lexicon on social media that well. I kind of suck at it, so that's kind of interesting. But we will talk about money. We probably will not open up our financial register to you because that's just a little too personal, but we'll get pretty close. Uh, anything else you want to add, Kurt? No. All right, guys. We'll see you next time.